Vestlandet, an area on the west coast of Norway that usually brings associations of gloomy weather, steep valleys and rounded but tall mountains. It's also the area that I had the pleasure of living in for about seven years before we moved more inland. This April Bendik and I had the opportunity to travel through some of the not so touristy parts of this area. We were on a tour to different schools in the area with a paper workshop, which also meant that our route, hotels and travel plans were already made by someone else ahead. Wow. This journey just kept surprising us and I eventually decided I would make some sort of travel vlogs from it. Because some of these places and even the road to these places are absolute hidden gems of the beaten tourist path. But there were a few problems with this plan. Firstly, our time would be limited since we were working all day in the schools. So we are too tired and we don't have time for that. So, And secondly, it was not a route that we had set up ourselves, so we had no idea what we would be seeing. Can a good travel vlog really come from that? First I got lost in the dark and now we got lost in the snow. I am so cold on my feet right now. We finished with our first day and it went well, so we're pretty happy about it. And now we're just gonna walk around Voss, which is the place that we are at uh, right now. It's a um, town, I guess. And I think I will take you along a little bit and show you this place because it's a very typical west coast town, I would say. Voss has about 6,745 inhabitants. So it's a relatively small place, but it still has a lot of restaurants, local beer and good coffee to offer. It's also situated right by this beautiful lake with a view of the mountains. Thank you for the hug. People usually come to Voss to do some kind of outdoor activities like skiing or some kind of extreme sport. Not to go sightseeing in the town. But Bendik and I love exploring small towns and figuring out what they're about. So that's the first thing we did. Yeah. Getting some coffee. We are not doing that much here today. So this is what we're doing. Isn't it? That house is very beautiful. Got some coffee in this beautiful, beautiful bar. It was really nice and the bartender was super nice. So yeah, check that out. So one of the things I really like about Voss is that actually all of the signs almost are very like old school. They look very much like the shop signs looks, looked before, like back in the day.
So I would say Vos is kind of a mix between a very beautiful and idyllic and with all these mountains in the background. But also you have this sort of rugged and kind of rough and worn down feeling to it, which is more of a... The west coast of Norway has this kind of side to it, which is kind of industrial and also you have always this dark and gloomy weather. So, but I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. Which is also why I like all those old signs and all that stuff. We had gotten a tip that there was a place in the hills just outside of the city center that was worth the walk. So we headed there and had no clue really what we were going to see. And it was going to be one of the first of many surprises along this journey. So we are at a very cool place called Bordalsjelle. And it's this um, steep ravine or what do you call it in English? I don't know, but yeah, a valley that has been made by the melting water from the ice uh, when there was ice here. And it's super cool and very, very steep. Sort of scary for me since I have a tiny fear of heights. this very deep and kind of uh, thunder like sound to it so it's very like I don't think I have the best microphone to like capture the sound but if you are ever in Voss you should uh, go here so we had to wash all of the towels from the workshop and now we're all drying all of them in our hotel room including the newspapers that we were using <laughs> and we had to dry them. We had to be a bit creative with the, where we put them. <laughs> so now the whole hotel room is kind of a Power washing rack. Washing rack, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Voss is sort of a what to say outdoor sports kind of tourist attraction. So if you want to go paragliding or rafting or something like that, then Voss is the place for that. Uh, but uh, we are not the best travel vloggers, so uh, we will not be doing anything of that because we are too tired and we don't have time for that. So yeah, if you like that kind of stuff, I would recommend going here. Now we were just going to relax and watch a video. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. Well. So 
the hotel uh, closed due to there being no guests except for Bendik and me. So um, we were moved on to their motel. So now we're kind of in an apartment. And we were a bit disappointed because we were wanting to be in that hotel. But uh, actually it's pretty nice. At least we have a very beautiful view. We can actually take a bath, I think. Maybe I'll do that. And also, I think today we have a sort of a work day just sitting here in the motel. Also, we were thinking about maybe biking around this whole lake. So we might be taking you along on that. We missed our e-bikes from home so much that so we had to do an e-bike ride around the lake, I think. I am of course biased since I really love e-bikes, but I would definitely recommend doing this trip around the lake. It was so much beautiful places to see and it was just such a calm and nice way to experience the area. You ready for the last stretch? Yeah. Yes. The day after that it was time to leave Voss and head for a new area. We would be driving on an old road from Voss to Stamnes and then to Brekke by Sognefjorden. If it were not for the school we were about to visit, we would probably not have driven this road, but what an experience it turned out to be. This tiny, tiny little road, taking us through all these small tunnels and inwards and inwards through the land. This road that we're driving on right now is so small that it's not really room for two cars. You just have to, if you meet the car, you have to go into some of the small pockets over here. This one is cool. Yeah. <laughs> gonna check it out yeah <laughs> so we are in Straume right now and uh, this uh, board says that uh, people lived here even 6,000 years ago because there's a I think there's a cave here that we are going to look for where they used to live uh, so that's kind of interesting and it's a very strange place because we uh, we drove on this very 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 small road all the way here and it was really steep and you can see all these hills yeah so uh, it was interesting to come here it's like this little hidden hidden village in the mountains we are looking for the cave and I want to fly my drone here, but it's so quiet that I'm scared I'm going to disturb these people. 
can you hear that quietness? It's nice. The only thing we hear is sheep. So they used to store their boats here, and that's why it's called Schipshelleren. Do you feel like there is some kind of weird feeling to this place? Mm. It's so quiet. And it's like... Yeah, I, f I have this... I feel that it has been like a settlement for people in the Stone Age, in a mm. way. Almost like you can feel it, this mm. ancient feeling. Maybe also because this mountain is huge. Mm -hmm.